Hello and welcome everyone. We're glad you joined us today. My name is Eric Cave. I'm the director of NextGen Ministries for the Pacific Northwest Conference. Each quarter we pick something that was important for the church, something, something we would hope that our churches and people would grow in. And this quarter is scripture. And when I thought about who would be a good person to interview about scripture, the first person that came to my mind was Keith Barron. Keith, welcome. I'm really glad you're here. Why don't you tell us a little about who you are, your background, and what led you into the kind of ministry you're involved in today? Yeah, well, thanks for thanks for having me. So good to be here. I, I love any chance I get to, to serve the covenant because we were my wife and I and our three kids, we attend Creekside in Redmond, Washington. But my journey with the covenant goes way, way back. My parents were not raised in the covenant, but when my dad was the dean of students at Kansas Wesleyan University in Salina, Kansas, we plugged into this church that at that time was small and now is pretty significant size. It was Salina First Covenant Church. And then after college, my first job was as the youth and worship pastor at this small church plant called Hope Covenant Church with Doug Olson. And during that season of being a youth pastor, I ended up seeing a guy who had memorized the entire gospel of Luke and performed it from memory. And I was invited to this true, in all transparency, thought I was going to be bored to death and sat in a place where I could leave after the first hour. And that night, it was April 18th of 93, the living word of God went from being a phrase to a reality. I ended up staying through the whole thing, asking this guy, Bruce Kuhn, out to lunch the next day. We spent nine hours together, and he challenged me to soak in big chunks of scripture. And that ended up changing my whole view on scripture and even the purpose for being in scripture, as well as what would later change my whole trajectory of ministry from from full-time church youth ministry to, uh, to traveling and, and writing and speaking all about helping people not just believe and study the Bible, but also enjoy it. So I think that's one of the big things we're missing in the church. That's excellent. That's a cool story. I don't know if I've heard that before. So thanks for sharing that. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I've known you, like when I think of Keith Farron, Bible comes to mind right away. But it's not just your knowledge of scripture and your ability to quote very large portions of it. Um, but I think of you as someone who is passionate about scripture, like a, a, you have a deep personal connection and passion for the word of God. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd love to just share where does that passion for scripture come from for you? Well, I got to say, it's, it, it was not something that I was born with. You know, I, I, we, we love good preaching. We love to worship and sing together. We love community. We love to eat together. We love to serve together. We love youth group. We love summer camp. We love retreats and mission trips. And then somebody brings up the Bible and they go, I should be more consistent with that. I should know it better. And that was my journey until I started soaking in bigger chunks of scripture and realized that over the course of that summer, and then in 94, when I just said, I'm going to read the gospel of John. Some days I'll read for 20 minutes, some days an hour, but I'll just read and I'm just going to stay in the gospel of John for a full year. And, and it was during that time that I found that I not only understood it better than I ever had before, but I started enjoying it more than I ever had before. And I realized that part of it was I was shifting my purpose for going to the Bible, what had been to learn what God wanted me to know to do what he wanted me to do and live a life that honored and pleased him, which all sounds good, except that's not the purpose of the Bible. The purpose of the Bible, the Bible is the only book that's ever been written with the sole purpose of drawing them into a relationship with its author. And when I started approaching the Bible relationally rather than informationally, everything changed. And not only did I enjoy it more, but I learned more. I was comforted better. Mm -hmm. And when that started, when that shift in my mindset from informational Bible study to relational Bible study was made, I just started loving it more. And then when you love something, you just want to talk about it. And so, you know, that's probably some, some of what, what you hear kind of oozing out of me is that I, I can't talk to people about the Bible without getting excited about it. Love of scripture does ooze out of you, like you said, <laughs> and it's become a ministry for you that is significant. And uh, I would love for you to share 
with us. Like, what does your ministry look like today? And how could individuals or churches connect with what you have to offer? Yeah, my my ministry really has has a handful of different facets to it. One, my, my favorite thing, hands down, if I could do one thing every day for the rest of my life, it would be speak to live audiences. So speaking at conferences, speaking at churches, helping you know individuals, families, and whole churches move from should to want when it comes to the Bible. That's what I do. And then writing. So some of it is books and some of it is creating online courses and training. And so I started the Bible Life Community, which is my my online membership where I create a new Bible study every month. I uh, facilitate that in a private Facebook group. And then I do some live teaching every Monday and interview different people every Tuesday. Kind of the, the, the purpose of it all is, is looking at both the, the mindset, which I've talked about this, this idea of how to read the Bible relationally, not just informationally. Uh, and so teaching people that process and approach and methodology. My tip for the day is it, it, it really comes from what I think is the biggest mistake people make and why they don't enjoy the Bible is we study the Bible like we're studying the scenes of a movie we've never watched. And so, you, we, you know, if you've seen a movie, you don't mind discussing a scene, but you don't want to pause it after scene one and discuss it and pause it after scene two and discuss it. So I tell people, if you can, if you can watch the movie first, read Philippians 10, 15, 20 times, and then study it a couple of verses a day. And it changes the whole thing because you remember the whole as you're looking at the detail, which is how God's wired your brain to learn. So a lot of that, I mean, from a, how churches can engage, I mean, if they want to do something, a live event, then I'd love to talk to them about that. Uh, as far as resources that I've created for individuals and families and churches, the, the two primary ones are my two courses. One is called Relational Bible Study that teaches my whole process for how to study the Bible. And so whole churches have done that together as a church community to help the whole church enjoy the Bible more. And then just in September, I just released a new one called The Simplest Way to Internalize Any Verse, Chapter, or Whole Book of the Bible. And that really teaches my whole process of doing what I call internalizing scripture, not just memorizing it, because memorization is about knowing the words and internalization is about knowing the word. So that's kind of the differentiator there. Mm -hmm. And then if there's somebody who would want to engage in the Bible Life community, they can uh, certainly check out BibleLifeCommunity.com or KeithFerrin.com is where you'll find all of those things, or people can are certainly welcome to email me directly, just Keith at KeithFerrin.com. Happy to answer any questions or how I can serve you in your church for sure. That's great. Thank you, Keith. Those uh, links that you just mentioned will all be uh, listed in this blog post down below. So if you are interested in yeah, connecting with Keith, just follow those links. And I would encourage you to do so. Th Keith, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for sharing with us your life and your ministry. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. So glad to be here and love the covenant, love serving churches when I can. So thanks for the opportunity.